All right, we're back again with another episode of Roofer Reflections. Um, excited to have uh, Josh and uh, Sarah here. Thank you, thank you uh, for coming to the show. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, we're excited to be here. Thank you. You have the accent and you have the, the window. Yeah. It's tell where you are, um, all that stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Please excuse the accents, um, everyone. But um, yeah, so we're LPI. So my name's Sarah Lazar. I head up a team of professionals who are based in London, um, but we specialise 100% of our time in effectively solving the talent shortage within the roofing industry in the US and Canada. Um, and then I'll let Josh introduce himself. So yeah, my name is Josh and I currently head up our roofing desk here. So essentially, you know, what, what we do is we currently work around 30 uh, roofing manufacturers, contracts and suppliers across the US, um, mainly in the southeast at the minute, but we pretty much cover pretty much nationwide, trying to bridge the gap in, in the talent side. So uh, yeah, from overseas. What, uh, you know, made you want to work from, you know, London to service the US market? How does that work? Yeah, it's really interesting one with us. So we've worked in the US markets outside of roofing for about six years now. Um, started out in the building envelope industry mainly and forensics. So we uh, did like recruitment for a lot of companies up maybe like Florida, yeah. New York, and then the East Coast. Um, and a lot of our clients said to us, you know, hey, what about like roofing professionals? You know, they might have wanted like a roofing division on, on the contracting side. But a lot of these companies did like an envelope as a whole, exterior restoration, things like that. And they wanted to get into more solely roofing. And we never really realized how big the industry was. I think. I kind of had this preconception that roofing was done all by GCs, wasn't like its own thing as itself. The more time we spent looking into it, talking to our clients, we realized that it was just this huge industry we had no idea about. And um, yeah, there was a like, clear, clear kind of need for, I guess, help on the, on the talent side. So that's when we got involved, started talking to small boutique companies, nationwide firms, and went from there really, and now we're kind of here today, so. Yeah, and it absolutely spiraled overnight. So we kind of, I think we started it as, a good client of ours on the AEC side said, I'm really struggling to find good roof contractors, people I can trust, people I can really rely on to get the job done. So we said, listen, we can we can help you find this. It's quite similar, it's quite related. And then from there, it just absolutely spiraled to now we have over 150 clients across the US and Canada. Um, and we've really grown exponentially. And I don't think we realized just how much there is a, a talent gap and a labor shortage within the industry. And it's great to be able to do our bit, albeit from London, um, to help solve that gap, um, but also provide um, yeah, our clients with, with crucial talent they need and people they need in order to complete their projects and keep growing their businesses. To start a business is hard, but to start a business in service, a time zone that's, you know, opposite and in and, and a market that you're you have some distance over it's, it's not the first thing that comes to mind uh, especially also in the aec right you said you started on the forensic side which is um, i guess it's more closely related to the owners maybe the architects side of things is that, is yeah. that correct yeah absolutely so i guess we start with our architectural engineering companies and um, I guess, of course, very topical with the storms that, that are hitting and doing a lot of the cat work and emergency response um, and a lot of the kind of construction defects, moving to litigation type area of the market. And that's kind of evolved us into, into the roofing side. But um, the reason we specialize in the US more than the UK is, to be honest, there's more work. It's a bigger market. Um, there are more talented professionals, but it's also more, it's, it's a bigger bigger section really. It's a it's a bigger market market area. When you you first got in, was it just uh, you know one contact to the other? What were the initial hurdles? You know, uh, did you travel to the U.S. a lot? How did you how did you get off the ground? Yeah, absolutely. So I kind of managed to get over to to the U.S. kind of I'd say once every every three months. Um, we attend conferences like the International Roofing Expo, which we'll be at in February. Um, Josh and I, which will be which will be great. Um, and we just we like to do our business as much as we can face to face, getting to know people. But really, we work word of mouth, so people will know we did a good job, um, and then refer us to friends of theirs in the same industry or people that we've helped move roles or find a new find a new job. Will kind of say, "Listen, you should work with my friend," and it kind of just spirals. Um, from there. So we really use, um, I guess, reputation, quality work that we do, but also, yeah, kind of the word of mouth to kind of spiral us and get us off the ground. What, what area do you focus um, specifically, um, management tier, 
um, you know, we can start there and then we can talk about sort of, you know, companies in general on what they can do to sort of like, you know, improve, improve their performance in recruiting overall. The main areas we tend to focus on would be, I want to say mid-level and above. Of course, like, you know, we love to work more senior roles. Of course, not like the company needs like a you know, new VP or operations guy every day. But I think so we, we focus on mainly like project managers, SMAs, superintendents. I want to say, I call it mid-level, but, um, you know, still, you know, essential people kind of where we can. Probably less on the installation side, kind of guys out in the field, I'd say, but more so, you know, yeah, again, service managers, uh, estimators, project managers, I can list off, you know, quite a few roles. And um, that's how we work, really. I think, of course, the, the main need comes at those kind of roles. Again, like I said, not everyone needs like a new CRO or every day or a new, new CEO. So that's where we mainly, mainly, mainly play. Yeah. And we work very strategically. So across the team, there is a kind of individual consultant that specializes in each state, really, which allows that person to become very familiar with the key players in that state, very, very familiar with who's winning work, who's not winning work, what um, the industry is shaping up to be in that area. Are people using new technologies? Is solar booming? Is green, green roofing booming in that area? Or are there new, um, I don't know, investigation methods or inspection methods for pre-existing roofs and retrofitting roofs that are being kind of installed in, in that area and, and used in that area? So we have each consultant per space. So they can become an expert and we can provide not really just kind of the candidates for you guys in that service, but also we can provide um, information really as to kind of what's going on, where the, in the industry is trending and, and what's going, uh, what's happening. Yeah. And being from, uh, you know, outside the roofing industry coming in, you know, mm -hmm. you're looking at it from fresh eyes. What, what have you noticed about the roofing industry? I think the main thing from going from more engineering to, to roofing was just the, the sheer size. I think I think if you look at the stats from how it's going to grow over the next you know seven eight years, it, it's crazy some of the figures we're looking at. Um, I think one thing which I found really cool by it was the just the sheer opportunity. I think I've seen firms grow from you know 10 million to 50 million in a year. I mean some of the, some of the figures are, are pretty crazy. But also I think one of the, the, the nice things is seeing people that have not necessarily had like a I guess like not a fancy degree or haven't really been to school and have kind of gone from the ground up. That, that's quite a cool aspect. You can come to the roofing industry with, you know, little constructional experience or kind of no degree and you know, become a CEO of a, a massive firm, which is, a, which is really cool. I can kind of see it from both the London side and the US side, but also from the engineering versus the roofing side. And I think that the evolution in products as well, there's a new product all the time. There's something evolving and changing and revolutionizing the market that you don't necessarily find in other areas you don't necessarily find in the uk and in london in general but the us i think it's an it's an ever-evolving industry and i think that there are some brilliant minds in the industry and some real entrepreneurs in the industry that are providing solutions for common problems um, and i think it's just an exciting space to kind of be involved in and network in and operate in in general yeah, I think the competition is always going to going to be growing. I, I don't want to say it's saturated, but I guess uh, naturally as it grows, kind of areas can become more popular. I think for for young people as well, um, I know one thing that you know a lot of people try and encourage is is to get more young people in the industry at, at a young age. Of course, there's no roofing degree, and I think nowadays you know going to construction is a little bit less popular for someone like a university age. So I think I'm excited to see kind of what things we put in place to to encourage people to join because. It can be a very successful career. I think it's a shame that people think that it can't be a successful thing to get into because it really can be at any, at any age.